In this video, we are going to talk about pair of linear equations in two variables. So, what is an equation? Equation is simply the equality of two mathematical expressions. Now, let's try to understand this statement with the help of an example. Suppose we are having something like this, that is x squared plus y is equal to z plus t cube. Here, in this expression, we are having x squared plus y and z plus t cube as mathematical expressions. And these two mathematical expressions are related with the help of that equal sign. So, x squared plus y is equal to z plus t cube is an equation. Now, next question is, what is a linear equation? Any equation with highest power of the variables as 1 are known as linear equation. For example, x plus y is equal to z plus 1. Here, the highest power of the variables that is x, y and z is 1. So, x plus y is equal to z plus 1 is a linear equation. Now, we are putting more conditions, that is only two variables. So, our equations are linear and it can have only two variables. For example, it can be something like this, x plus y is equal to 10. Or we may have something like this, 5z plus 10x is equal to 1. Here, z and x are the variables. Both of these are examples of linear equation in two variables. Now, any linear equation in two variables can be written as ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. Here, a, b and c are constants while x and y are variables. Now, ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 represents a straight line. And now, we have a pair of linear equations. So, we have two of them. That is, basically we are having two straight lines. Now, let's draw these two lines in a graph. Then, we can have something like this. Here, both of the lines are parallel to each other. Or, we may have something like this. Here, both of these lines are intersecting with each other at a single point. Or, we may have something like this. Here, one line is exactly above another line. So these can be the cases. Let's try to put all of this together in the form of a summary. We can have something like this. These are known as parallel lines. Or we may have something like this where both of these lines are intersecting with each other at a particular point. This is an example of intersecting line. Or we may have something like this. Here one line is above another. This is known as coincident lines. Now. Suppose the equation of two lines can be represented as follows a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to 0 and the equation of second line is a2x plus b2y plus c2 is equal to 0. So we can have a case something like this where both of these lines are intersecting at a particular point. So this is the case of intersecting lines. Now the condition for or such intersecting line is something like this. a1 by a2 is not as equal to b1 by b2. Here we will be having unique solution because both of these lines are intersecting at a particular point. That means we are having just one single point which is verifying the equations of both the lines. Now let's consider another case. Let's take the case of to parallel lines. Here the condition for the parallel lines are something like this. a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is not is equal to c1 by c2. Here we are having no solutions because there doesn't exist any point which will verify the equations of both the lines. So we are having no solutions or we may Think about it something like this as the lines will never intersect so there will be no common point between them so they will be having no solutions. 
Now we may consider another case something like this that is one line is above another line. Here these are known as coincident lines. Now the condition for this is something like this a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is equal to c1 by c2. Here we will be having infinitely many solutions. Actually any point which is lying on the a purple L line is also lying on the green line. So all the points on these lines are the solution of both the equations. So we will be having basically infinite number of the points which will be the solution of both the equations. Now let's try to solve this pair of linear equations in two variables using substitution method. Here we must note that in substitution method the name itself says is substitution which means to substitute a variable. Now let's, let's try to understand this method. Suppose we have the equation of two lines as minus 2x plus y minus 1 is equal to 0 and another equation 3x plus y minus 5 is equal to 0. So here we can see that minus 2 by 3 is not is equal to 1 by 1. Here actually we are verifying the, the formula a1 by a2 is not is equal to b1 by b2 to make sure whether the equation of two lines is having a solution or not. Actually when we will be given two linear equation then we must first check whether those two equations are having a unique solution, infinite solution or no solution only then we should proceed further to find out the solution of those two equations. Here we are getting a1 by a2 is not is equal to b1 by b2. So here we will be having a unique solution. So we may proceed to find out the unique solution of these two equations. And also we must note that as it's a unique solution, so it's a coincident lines. And if we draw the graph of these two equations, then we will be getting something like this. So let's try to find out that point which will be at the intersection of these two lines. Suppose let's, let's rewrite those, those two equations. This is minus 2x plus y minus 1 is equal to 0 and 3x plus y minus 5 is equal to 0. Or here we may write the second equation as 3x is equal to minus of y minus 5 or, or x is equal to minus of y minus 5 divided by 3. Now we will be substituting the value of x from 3 to 1 and then we will be getting something like this minus 2 of minus of y minus 5 divided by 3 plus y minus 1 is equal to 0. Now if we simplify this further then we will be getting something like this. Now we must see that this is an equation involving only y and the x is gone because we have earlier substituted x in terms of y. So now well, on simplifying this further we will be getting something like this and on simplifying it little more we will be getting something like this. Here finally we will be getting y is equal to 13 by 5 or y is equal to 2.6. Now we have found out the value of y. The next thing we should do is that we will we'll try to find out the value of x. Now we will be substituting this y is equal to 2.6 to equation number 1 that is minus 2x plus y minus 1 is equal to 0. So we will be having minus 2x plus 2.6 minus 1 is equal to 0. Now on simplifying we will be having x is equal to 1.6 by 2 is equal to 0 0.8. So we are getting x is equal to 0 0.8 and y is equal to 2.6. Now let's try to solve the same example with the help of elimination method. Now let's rewrite the equation of these two lines. These are this minus 2x plus y minus 1 is equal to 0 and 3x plus y minus 5 is equal to 0. <coughs> now we must note that the name elimination method itself says eliminate. That means we must eliminate something in this method. Now let's try to understand it a little bit more. Now we are multiplying 1 by 3 and 2 by minus 2. And we will be getting something like this. 
But the question is why I am choosing to multiply 1 by 3 and 2 by minus 2. Actually, the objective behind multiplying equation 1 and equation 2 with, the, with those two numbers are that I want to eliminate the x. So, the coefficients of x should be same. Here, I am trying to make the coefficients of x that is minus 2 and 3 to minus 6 so that I can easily eliminate it x from this two equation. So, in elimination method, we must first try to eliminate a variable and in doing so, we must make their coefficients equal by multiplying it with a suitable number. So, from equation 1, we are getting 3 whole into two, minus 2x plus y minus 1 is equal to 3 into 0, which will be simplified as minus 6x plus 3y minus 3 is equal to 0. Now, we are doing similar thing with equation 2. Here, we are multiplying equation 2 with minus 2, that is minus 2 whole into 3x plus y minus 5 is equal to 2 into 0. Now, we are getting minus 6x minus 2y plus 10 is equal to 0. Here we are seeing the coefficient of x is minus 6 in both of this equation, that is equation 3 and equation 4. So now we will be subtracting equation number 3 from equation number 4 and then we will be having something like this. That is minus 6x minus 2y plus 10 minus of minus 6x plus 3y minus 3 is equal to 0 minus 0. Now on simplifying it, we will be having something like this minus 6x plus 6x minus 2y minus 3y plus 10 plus 3 is equal to 0. Now minus 6x and plus 6x get cancelled and we will be getting something like this minus 5y plus 13 is equal to 0. On simplifying it further we will be getting y is equal to 13 by 5 is equal to 2.6. Now we will be substituting y is equal to 2.6 to equation number 1 which is minus 2x plus y minus 1 is equal to 0. So, we will be getting something like this, minus 2x plus 2.6 minus 1 is equal to 0. On simplifying it further, we will be getting minus 2x plus 1.6 is equal to 0. And on simplifying it further, we will be getting x is equal to 0.8. So, what we will be getting in finally is that x is equal to 0.8 and y is equal to 2.6. This is the same result which we have got earlier using the substitution method. Now, let us try to solve the same equations with the help of cross multiplication method. Now let us rewrite these equations once again that is the equation of the two lines are a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to 0, a2x plus b2y plus c2 is equal to 0. Here according to the cross multiplication method we will be getting this formula that is x whole divided by b1c2 minus b2c1 is equal to y by c1a2 minus c2 by a1 is equal to 1 by a1b2 minus a2b1. Now, here one of the interesting thing about cross multiplication method is that it is much more simpler if we remember the formula. That is this formula which is at the bottom of the screen. Now, this formula looks fairly complicated so we must find a way around to memorize this formula. We actually, we don't need to memorize this formula uh, entirely. There is a trick. Suppose, let us write x, y and 1 and then, then we will be writing b1, c1, a1, b1 and then we will be writing b2, c2, a2, b2. Now, here, if we we just let's look along the rows, then we will find in x, y, 1 and in the row below that is b1, c1, a1, b1 that is b, c, a, b and again in the last row we are finding b, c, a, b. So we remember that x, y, 1 then below that line we have to write b, c, a, b and again b, c, a, b and on, on coming from top to bottom the top subscript should be 1 and the bottom subscript should be so, on writing this, then we will be multiplying B1 with C2, B2 with C1. That is, first we are coming down, then we are get going up. We are coming down in B1 to C2 and then we are going up from B2 to C1. Here, we are writing is B1, C2 minus B2, C1. 
and then and now let's do it it for y here we are writing in c1 into a2 here we are writing in the first term in the denominator of, of y by c1 in a2 minus c2 a1 and minus as we are writing c2 a1 which is this now we are doing same thing for one also that is we are first multiplying a1 with b2 and then we are writing a1 b2 minus a2 b1 which is this now let's try to, to solve the same example with the help of cross multiplication method let's write the equation of those two lines which is something like this minus 2x plus y minus 1 is equal to 0 3x plus y minus 5 is equal to 0 so if we just put a1 and b1 c1 and a2 b2 c2 we are getting something like this but we must uh, as follow the, the procedure so it is something like this here we are writing here our b1 is 1 that's coefficient of y that is, is 1 and then c1 is minus 1 and then a1 is minus 2 and then we are writing in b1 once again similarly doing for b2 c2 a2 and b2 now we are, are multiplying 1 to minus 5 then we are writing minus 1 into minus 1 then in the denominator of y we are writing minus 1 into 3 minus minus of 5 into or minus of 2 then again we are writing minus of, of 2 into 1 minus 3 into 1 so this is how we are getting in the expressions now if we see carefully at the bottom of this uh, screen, those expressions are fairly simple. We just have to put the denominator of x, x into the, the numerator of the last term. The similar thing and should be done for y. Now let's do it. Let's rewrite the expression in this slide once again and then we can just write the denominator of, of x into the numerator of 1 by minus 2 into 1 minus is 3 into 1 which will be evaluated as 0 0.8 now doing the similar thing for y we will be getting something like this that is 2.6 here once again we are getting similar results that is x is equal to 0.8 and y is equal to 2.6 here cross multiplication method is fairly simple but we must remember the a formula for it or we at least we must remember that x y 1 b c a b from that we can easily find out that formula thank you for watching